Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Dang and I am going to show you how to overcome self-doubt. What is self-doubt? Self-doubt is defined as a state of uncertainty between our thoughts, beliefs, emotions, opinions, or decisions we hold in our minds. How we were nurtured during our childhood years plays a role in self-doubt. The undisputed first law of personal growth is that people never rise up above the opinion of themselves. A huge challenge is that opinion is largely formed during our childhood years from the perception of where we think we did or didn't get love from the people whom we wanted it most from. Hmm. I'll let you sit with that for a little. Imagine Mary, a mother to her son and her daughter. She just got off of work and is at the grocery store with her 12-year-old son, John. She is so glad she and her son are at the checkout lane because then that means that they can leave the store and then she can pick up her five-year-old daughter from aftercare just in time to get back home and make dinner for her partner. She feels the pressure from life itself because she recently just got in an argument with her partner and she has so much on her plate. As she's unloading the groceries, her son is begging her to buy this toy that he wants really bad. She says no, yet he's persistent. Finally, she explodes and says, no, you can't have that toy. You haven't been good enough lately. In fact, you barely are. Now, 12-year-old John doesn't know his mom is having a stressful day and she's on a time crunch. All he hears is that he isn't good enough. While the words spoken were spontaneous, it came and it passed, the way he felt from hearing he wasn't good enough was long-lasting. At times, we pay attention to the wrong things rather than building from the outside in when it should have been from the inside out. This applies to life as a whole. What matters most is what's inside. We only use 5% of our conscious mind and the other 95% of the time is what I call sleeping awake on autopilot. If you're being programmed by the influences of your surroundings, then you can't have that default magnetic pull to move you away from the constant negativity. It's constant programming. Our physical bodies adapt to our environment. We don't get to choose that. What we do get to choose is the environment that we put ourselves in, whether that be the gym or Burger King. The body doesn't care, it just adapts. The same goes for our mind. So stop putting the wrong programming in. This is called the law of conformity. You are who you surround yourself with. On to my next point, the amygdala is part of the brain that is by evolution designed to recognize negative over positive. As humans, it's normal to feel fear as we will for the rest of our life. However, you don't want to let that fear control you. This is a choice that you get to make. You know the saying that there's nothing to fear but fear itself? It sheds light that a majority of the time, it's not the actual thing that we fear, but having the fear itself that is holding you back. Most of the time, it's not that unfavorable situation that might happen, but it's the actual fear, the thoughts about that unfavorable outcome that are holding you back. If I had cancer and I'm losing my hair and losing weight, I put on a wig and eat a ton that doesn't get rid of the cancer. So likewise, we have to get to the core of the issue and the core of the issue is at your heart. All the time, it's a low sense of self-worth. At one point in my life, I had doubts about finding a worthy partner. I feared that all men were the same. I feared that I wasn't worthy. So I put on a bunch of makeup, stuffed my bra, acted like someone I wasn't. One day, a kind older couple approached me and striked up a conversation. I was in a sweatshirt, sweatpants, no makeup on, and they had just sat down next to me. I was sitting alone, and they spoke to me about their marriage together. The husband said, I was such a party boy when I was younger, and I didn't want to settle down. Which then the wife said, well, until you met me. He replied saying, exactly, trust me. I've been married for 40 years, and I wouldn't change a thing. The wife said, well, you could put the toilet seat down after you're done. <laughs> and then which I replied, you're lucky. I wish to have what you both have. The wife said, you will. God will give you that when the time is right. This conversation made such an impact on my view of long-term relationships. I realized that I wanted to attract a man that was of high value, that I myself needed to be of high value as well. 
And I'm not just talking about looks, I'm talking about the whole package. Over time, I built the confidence to attract what I was seeking. Building confidence is like a muscle. It doesn't happen overnight. I speak in depth about it in my self-confidence video. I'll leave the link like right here. Being aware of my worth shed a light on a dark mindset I had. I had hope inside my heart and naturally I let go of what was hopeless. Self-doubt is like a tree. Self-doubt is the fruit. It is a result of what was planted. You have to get to the root of the tree to figure out where it came from. Now, fast forward to being a mom. As a first time mom to a now nine month old baby, I can still remember the fear I felt having to drive by myself with my baby in the back seat. The thought of my baby crying while I was unable to be by her side made me anxious. Anxious to the point that if I had to go somewhere with my baby, I would ask someone to accompany me and I would arrange my whole schedule to accommodate my plus one. Obviously, constantly doing that is not sustainable and caused inconveniences to both me and those around me. I was also aware that driving alone with my daughter was inevitable. By recognizing that, I decided to make a game plan. My objective was to have my baby be content in the back seat while I drive with an ease of mind. I have a simple mental checklist when I go on a drive with Belle. And that is to make sure my baby is fed and her diaper is changed. Also, I bring some teething toys along so she can be occupied. Quite often, I drive longer distances of like 40 to 50 minutes. So with those drives, I take them right before it's my baby's nap time. So it will be great for both me and her. So she can sleep on the drive and the noise of the car on the highway acts as like a white noise, which instantly helps her fall asleep. A key item that I say is a must is a mirror. They are inexpensive and can easily be found on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below for the one that I have and love. A car seat mirror is key because my baby was used to someone always being by her side, carrying her. So in order for her to be aware, she was just not abandoned in the car seat. The mirror let her be aware of my presence. So with a good game plan and execution, I can now take my baby anywhere and not doubt my actions. Now, people will ask me, did you know that so-and-so said this and that about you? Like, are you kidding me? That is just one of many opinions that people have of me. The superior question to ask would be, what do you choose to focus on? Think of the labor and delivery section of the hospital. Someone might say, oh my God, do you hear that woman screaming? She's so loud. Versus you say, yes. But did you hear the intercom go off with a chime? A baby was just born. Have you ever compared yourself to others like friends or acquaintances? Do you sometimes feel jealous of what they have achieved? and think, why haven't I gotten to that point yet? At times we're focused on certain negativity and what we don't want to happen and not believing in ourselves. It's natural to feel that way and have those thoughts, but instead what we can do is focus that energy and turn it in to motivation to do good like others or dare I say, even better. In reality, there are so many positive traits that you possess and evidence that support that you are capable. You are capable. So stop putting the wrong things in and start putting the right things in. We live in a society where there are so many resources at our reach, whether it's a podcast, interviews, books, what you can do every single day or at least every single week is to take your stance and re-magnetize it in a positive direction that supports you and your greatness. There is no reason not to do that now in a society where everything is so readily available. If you don't take charge and be the star in the film of your life, you're going to be the film extra in someone else's. This brings me on to my next point, which is to get the things that should not be there out. For example, if I'm working out and I'm trying to get more in shape, I want to make sure my surroundings are tailored to that goal. If I have in my fridge a whole slab of cheesecake and chips and cookies in my pantry, I am allowing myself to think that it is okay to eat what's right in front of me. Instead, 
in my fridge, I could have yogurt or healthier alternatives. It is okay to eat when you feel hungry and to listen to your hunger cues, but to feed and nourish your body with fuel that will sustain you and make you feel great. I'm not afraid because I know that we all have limited time here. The real question is, who are you and what are you going to do with it? And how are you going to use who you are? You have a supreme destiny. When you are not aware of that, you get flustered, stressed, wanting something that isn't. Sometimes we get taken off track in the wrong marriage, in the wrong relationship, taking the wrong job. You can't help but feel like a failure. But there isn't such thing as failure because failure serves to move us in a different direction. So you are capable to get as much from your losses as you do your wins. Your losses are there to wake you up. When you understand that, you don't allow yourself to get completely thrown off by a grade or a circumstance because life is bigger than one circumstance. Relax, relax. Everything is gonna be okay because even if you are on a detour with yourself, you're not at ease with yourself, it's a cue that you need to be moving in a different direction. Don't allow yourself to be thrown off. Move yourself in a different direction. The way through the challenge is to ask yourself what the next right move is, and then after that, the next right move, and then the next right move. And not to be overwhelmed by it, because you are not defined by what someone says is a failure. Because failure is just there to serve you and point you into a different direction. Sometimes we don't realize we're operating from a self-doubt perspective. The first step is to realize our self-doubt. Once we realize we are self-aware and self-awareness is key to self-mastery. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video helps you in any sort of way gain clarity on how to overcome your self-doubt, then give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends and your family, and yeah. You know, you can do this. You got this. Bye.